Yeah, last weekend, uh, obviously big win, big big win for the program on Friday night. Able to uh, come back from a two nothing and three to one deficit there to respond well in the second period there to and then put them away in the third period. So that was good. And then Saturday, I thought it wasn't uh, it was a pretty tight game. I mean, uh, pretty tight game almost throughout the whole game there until they got that second one there, and then obviously they got an empty netter, but. Um, I thought five on five, we might even been a little bit stronger than on uh, Friday night, but uh, probably a little bit less opportunistic on Saturday night. And uh, looking back at the video, they, I mean, they played a good game. They, uh, we had a tougher time getting out of our zone a little bit and a tough time getting some sustained pressure in their offensive zone. A um, couple, uh, couple guys banged up, obviously, uh, we talked about there after. So now just, again, uh, obviously another important series coming up here with CC. So we're just uh, spending the week getting ready for those guys. What, what would you assess your injury situation to be right now? And I guess, how do you overcome that stuff? Yeah, it's tough. You know, you got, uh, you know, we forget about Mason Morelli that we lost at Christmas time. And it's kind of, it's good and bad. You kind of, when something like that happens, you know, he's done for the year. You kind of just remove it from your mind a little bit there and then, and then another another big piece that we've been missing is Jordan Clare with his uh, you know our left-handed defenseman there. We've been having, having uh, gals and lost McDonald play on their offside, which is more difficult, especially against good hockey teams, to advance the puck quickly when you're on your offhand. So uh, I think he might have been our leading defenseman point getter in the first half, and so he's just struggling getting back in the lineup uh, health-wise and. And then obviously to have two of your kind of top guys uh, go down there with Pope and Olson, so. But it is what it is. You got to just uh, find a way. I think that's one thing I've always been really excited about this year. We've guys have found a way to get better and keep improving, and and came through. And we need them to come through. So, just nice to we got to keep working with our guys uh, to keep getting better and take bigger roles uh, than maybe they had the weekend before, and uh, help the team keep rolling here. Yeah, just taking the fact of who they actually are out of it. You know, the fact about our issue came into the season, like trying to build so you could get four. You know, good lines of forwards, yeah. and now you're basically without an entire line. Yeah, exactly. I know it's it's crazy. It's it's just so uh, you know you can see the you know with the Western losing a couple of guys, and then even Denver loses one nothing to CC, and they don't have Troy Terry there. You know, and those guys that are a point a game or close to are over. That's a goal of the game, you know. So that's a lot of offense production coming from those types of players. So, but again, it's an opportunity for somebody else to step up, and and uh, that's why you work hard in practice, and that's why we. Preached our guys all the time. You can't fake it when you need it. You know you better work on it when it's when even when you don't need it. So when you do get the opportunity, you're there. So it's uh, it's really important that we keep that same mindset going and and you keep working and grinding and because uh, you never know where you're gonna get the tap on the shoulder to take a bigger role and it's gonna come for a few guys this weekend. Not that this uh, league isn't stressful enough at this time of the year, but you're kind of sitting in a spot now where you're playing for seeding. Um, you're playing to stay above 500, so you're still eligible for the tournament. You're playing to stay where you need to be in the pairwise, and all those things are kind of right on that yay or nay, well, I guess, line. Uh, do you feel any more stress? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you do. I mean, it's uh, if anyone's got any sleeping tips, I'll take them. And, uh, you know, it's just it's tough. I mean, it's been a little bit like that all season long because, I mean, think about our, our press conferences, you know, Two months ago, it's like, well, this is a big weekend. You, if you, you know, you lose two, you're in big trouble and stuff. And we found a way to, to keep winning and to keep competitive. And so it's the same thing. I mean, you just gotta. I think I'm just laughing as an outside self protector, you know, because it's so so stressful. I mean, it's so much work and it's so stressful and it just doesn't stop. And so, what what do you do? You know, you got to deal with it. You gotta you gotta just keep working. You gotta help these guys get better, and you gotta keep working as a staff too to get better. And and make some adjustments where we feel we can maybe help the team get better. And, and uh, you know, now you're playing CCU that just, you know, one in, in North Dakota's rink and one in Denver's rink on their last two series. So they've obviously been playing some good hockey. So it's just going to be uh, something that you got to be ready to go and, and uh, keep that same mindset. I don't know if you talk about this with the guys at all. I, mean, I guess to, 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 to a certain extent, but it almost has a feeling like now at this point, you, you need to win one of these last two series, not just split them, but need to win them if you want to be in a position where you're not sitting seven and then having to win in the tournament to keep your season going. Yeah. Um, a, do you feel that way? And B, if you do feel that way, is it does this series become more important because that's a team that's like directly in front of you and you could potentially pass to get out of that situation? Yeah. 
Yeah, again, I don't think it's uh, – I think oh, we've got to have a really good practice on Wednesday, you know, and just uh, start there. And there was a few things we got to make some adjustments now with the personnel situation and, and tweak a few ways of our system stuff that we play. So I think that's all the energy right now is to how to teach these guys that on Wednesday and uh, and get them going for that and prepare them for CC. And then uh, and then obviously in the back of our minds knowing that, you know, these Ws are going to be really important here down the stretch. and. You know, there's so many scenarios when this many of this happens, when this many of this happens and stuff. So, but I think uh, the best thing to do with that, I know from, from my sanity anyways, the best thing to do in that situation is really just pick one thing and, and focus on that and, and try to make sure we execute that at a, at a high level so we're not getting too far ahead of ourselves because otherwise it just becomes uh, almost too much to handle with all the pressure, you know. Yeah. Is it different with a team like this where you've played them before, but you played them so long ago? Like in North Dakota's case last week, you played them a month ago. Yeah. So there really haven't been a lot of series in between. But those teams you played in the first half of the year before the break, and now there can be a big difference between how you're playing and how they're playing. And exactly, yeah. You know, you kind of remember, you, I jot, you know, jot down their tendencies after you play them so it's fresh in your mind and how they look and what they do and uh, what they're trying to accomplish usually. And, you know, to the most part, teams don't change a ton for the most part. That's what I'm seeing anyways, that a lot of teams are playing similar. You know, you might get a little bit difference like St. Cloud in their rink or CC in their rink compared to our rink. Maybe some of the stuff they do is a little bit more effective in the Olympic rink. Um, and then maybe they change it slightly when they play in an NHL rink. So uh, some of that stuff will look, and that's nice having them play Denver their last weekend because now they were playing in an NHL rink, so we can watch those games and dissect their play a little bit. So it's, uh, but for the most part, they stay pretty consistent with their concepts or habits or whatever you want to call it, their systems a little bit. So um, they look quite similar. They're a team that really jumps off the rush. You know, they're I think they're one of the most potent rush teams in the NCHC. Um, they're very, very heavy scoring in that on those one line. You know, they got about 70 or 80 percent of their offense coming from that one line. And I got some good hockey players. I know some NHL scouts were talking about those two guys potentially uh, getting a lot of NHL interest. You know, so they got some high uh, octane players there. So again, it's just more preparing for that type of opponent. It seems like with their scenario, you know, they've been a team that probably at this time of the year didn't have a lot to play for in the past, and mm -hmm. they can. I guess you could probably expect them to be a little bit hungrier now that they're back to 500, and you know they're back in the playoff race, and you know they're not there in the pairwise yet, but they're creeping up, and mm -hmm. certainly you know the series helps them too. Uh, do you expect that out of them? Do you expect them to? Uh, yeah, absolutely. The one, the one thing about the, uh, the our, our guys nowadays is they're smart. You know, they all know what's going on and they all know the importance of it. So I'm sure there's nobody that needs to get those guys fired up for this weekend coming in here, just like our guys are excited for this weekend as well. So it's such a, you know, just that, again, that intensity, that pressure with them, with them getting that big win in Denver kind of helped them to set them up for a, a successful second half here push. So, uh, so we know they'll be hungry and, and, uh, and they're obviously a good hockey team. So, and they've kind of got things rolling. I think uh, I think it's Havlin's fourth year now, and you can see they're kind of playing a certain way and and establishing uh, you know some good structure and, and some really skilled kind of young guys that can move around out there. So uh, they're a tough team. Just uh, obviously we talked about these guys all year long, but just for the fact that this is the last guaranteed home weekend for your senior group. Uh, what have they meant to you just in the time that you had with them last year, and how much were you leaning on them in this year, and how have they kind of led you to? to get you to where you're at right now? I think it's tremendous. I mean, you, you know, one of, one of the things that when you play here, you remember your time here too and how, how fast it goes by and the memories you have and the, you want to leave on a good positive note. And so I think that's just extra motivation and hopefully for their teammates to work for them in their preparation this week. And I know it is as a staff to make sure we're putting the time that it takes to prepare these guys for a, for a successful last weekend at home potentially. Um, hopefully we can get them another home game here. But as you, you know, you never know with our conference. So... Again, it's just uh, they've been so great to me and uh, and for our program. I you know nothing but respect for those guys and how they conduct themselves and and so it's just really important that we make sure we give them uh, all we can here in the last weekend. You season. mentioned uh, before, just all, uh, with the, the, some different individuals in that group, um, how they do a lot of things the right way. Mm -hmm. and they kind of are natural leaders, whether they're vocal ones or not. Mm -hmm. um, what's it important just for setting the tone for? you and the culture that you want going forward to have a group like that as your senior class the first mm -hmm. one because if you had one that maybe wasn't that way yeah it's maybe harder to establish that kind of thing for sure absolutely you know again I think as a as a coach you're the guy in charge of driving the driving the ship and making sure that you're holding guys accountable and setting expectations and insisting uh, daily communication on how you want guys to behave and what you want your culture to be like but at the end of the day uh, that only really becomes powerful when those guys take ownership of it and, and execute it on a daily basis. And 
and a couple of guys in that group have done an unbelievable job, you know, really uh, echoing the message that we want to have from our staff uh, as our culture here for our program and uh, doing it on a daily basis, which in my opinion is the most difficult thing to do. It's easy to talk about something that's way, way more difficult to act on that on it and then do it on a daily basis. And, and they've done a great job. And, and, you know, I've reminded the team many times that, you know, if you're a freshman or a sophomore on this team and you want to be a good hockey player, you don't have to look too far to, to learn from, from guys here and, and you should do that. And, and we've challenged some of our younger guys. We've got a couple of sophomores and, and freshmen that, you know, they need to learn how to do that stuff uh, to have success, especially in this conference and you know I told our guys it's I mean you're playing in, in uh, you know one of the top conferences in college hockey you know we got guys going right from the NHL I mean it's an unforgiving unforgiving level that you're at but also be proud of yourself that you're at this high of level but now if you want to compete in here you got to do things a certain way consistently and uh, you know you got the Mesners and the Vessels and, and the Popes and those guys doing that on a on a day-to-day -day basis and and I think that's how you get something special when you get older guys that say, this is what it takes to play here. You want to play this program, this is how you have to behave. And then I think that's when you get something special, you know. So very proud of those guys and, and thankful and grateful that they've helped uh, establish that culture here. And, and at the end of the day, your players are your culture. You know, it's, it's what happens when I'm not around. That's really the true definition of culture, in my opinion. And, and they do a great job at that. Mike, the Denver have key contributors out uh, is ever a positive, but kind of off of just on the senior uh, thing of it, even with Pope, but having guys like Vessel, having guys like Messner compared to maybe some other teams that didn't have a strong senior class, is that mm -hmm. at least sort of soften the blow knowing that there's some uncertainty with, with these guys returning <coughs> and you have these seniors that can kind of set the tone for everybody else and so there's not really that panic or anything like that? Yeah, I think so. I think it comes from the coach too. I think if you're, you know, talking about, oh man, I can't believe we've got this many guys out or oh man, I can't believe we're this, this luck at this time, I think that's a negative thing for your players to absorb a little bit and, and like you said, we don't even talk about it. It's just just, hey, we go to work and who's healthy is in a play and and uh, we got like you said we got a bunch of good seniors that can carry the weight and and do their thing out there and we'll be fine so I think it's uh, you know it's extra special when you got some older guys that can just keep doing the right thing uh, day on day-to-day -day basis and and then not address it too much and not talk about it and and uh, you know who's healthy who's ready to go all right let's work with those guys and get ready for the weekend Brian Jones numbers are up versus last year um, give a little valuation to him. Do you see him getting better every year? Yeah, I thought uh, I thought Jonesy last year was good for us too last year, but maybe a little bit more inconsistent. If this is his first year in college hockey and the first year in the league, and and now he's logging some big minutes for us. You know, I think that's one thing we got to be conscious of. Uh, that uh, maybe hurt us a little bit on Saturday in North Dakota was the amount of minutes some of those guys were playing. You know, like you said, you got some key seniors, but when they're logging, I think Vessel had 16 minutes after two periods. That's unsustainable. And Jones is another guy that's up around 25 minutes, and that's unsustainable. So that's where, as a staff, you got to be a little careful um, that uh, you know you're you're relying on some of your more experienced guys, but to the, to the fault of that they got no gas left in the in the third period. So. Uh, so that's something we gotta you know monitor and, and make sure we're trying to spread the ice time out a little bit with those guys and give some guys more opportunity that maybe haven't had it in the past because of injuries. But um, but Jones he's really taken a step this year, you know, establishing playing with Mesner, you know, kind of facing other teams top line a lot of nights, and uh, you know just he's continues to grow, continues to get better, and he's a he's one of those great kids too that you know you really enjoy coaching. He's always listening, he's always asking questions. He wants to get better. And uh, he's a big piece uh, to us moving forward in the last uh, four regular season games. Mike, what was just sort of the overall feel of <coughs> after the weekend as a whole with Friday success and then even Saturday having that real big opportunity in the first period and just not getting it? Did you yeah. feel like the guys kind of took the whole weekend as a positive even with the injuries or is it still kind of remain to be seen? Yeah, you know, I think our guys are getting pretty good at establishing we want we want two wins, you know, and, and so it's hard to be positive. But after the game, too, you you know, you don't want to be negative, too negative either. But but in the same breath, I mean, we got to do things better. We got to, you know, we have to get better small, you know, at small increments. We have to find ways to better execute at things in, in key situations and and be a little bit smarter at times. You know, we can't take penalties at certain stages in the game. We have to, you know, there's things that we have to keep learning at to grow because when you're playing North Dakotas or, you know, whoever it is, CC or Denver, um, if you don't grow at those things, you're going to, you know, it's going to be tough to continually have success. So again, we, we, we reflected on the things we did well and, and to discuss the areas we got to get better and, uh, and then make sure we're taking care of our rest and all that stuff. And, 
and this weekend because it's a big time weekend for sure. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think we knew this um, even before last weekend too. It's um, you know we have to be realistic with ourselves too. So I think we kind of knew that. Um, but I think you know we're we're comfortable in that situation. Um, we know what we have to get done, and um, it's exciting too. You know, we like to play in these big games and. Um, we know we've got two huge weekends coming up, so it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, we uh, we know we kind of control our own destiny, and um, you know we can't be thinking too far ahead. But um, you know we got a big big series uh, this weekend, and uh, if we take care of this weekend, then uh, we'll move on to next weekend. So um, big games, we know that, and and we'll be ready. Just getting to you guys at all, just because this is the last guaranteed time that you are here in Omaha. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yep, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, thinking about it, but, uh, yeah, it's a, you know, it's just been a fun ride, and you try to reflect on, um, you know, the good times and, 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 the, good, and the bad times, but, uh, you know, it's going to be a fun one here this weekend, I think, for especially us seniors, you know, it's um, a lot of emotions, and, um, you know, we're just going to, you know, we talk to seniors, and we're just going to give it all we got these last, you know, um, four games, and, uh, but, you know, it's still exciting. You know, you don't know yet. We still can still have another weekend here and, um, you know, take it one weekend at a time, like Tyler said. Yeah, it's uh, been, being in Omaha for five years, it's, uh, it's been special. It's been a special place for um, us seniors and um, Jake and I, especially being uh, part of the Lancers. And, um, you know, we, we reflect on the times, like Joel said, and, but you try not to think about it too much. Um, I mean, we, we hope that this weekend's not our last weekend, but again, we have to be realistic. And, um, you know, we're, we're kind of lower in the standings, but you never know what can happen. So um, just, yeah, take it, taking it one game at a time. Thinking back to this, back in the preseason when, you know, you two were selected to lead this first group of your coverage show, and knowing what it meant to you at the time, um, I guess, how would you kind of assess this? As it's gone through uh, now that you're at the you know, trail end of it here, um, you know, it's going to be important that your class overall kind of got the culture set and the things going forward the way that you wanted them to go. But there's often a lot of, of things coming on the two of you as the you know, selected leaders in this group to get it out. I guess how would you assess that? Yeah, um, I guess the first thing was just like how much work it was. I mean, obviously knew there's going to be a lot of change, but. Um, you know the, the amount of work that we put in every week, and and we still are. It's it's a lot, and it's more than I expected. So, um, for me, I think that was the biggest thing. And um, I think as us too, you know, the big things we kind of just harp on is just doing the right things. Um, and you know, we, we're not, you know, the two most vocal guys, I guess. But I think um, we do a pretty good job of, of doing those right things and and stuff like that. But um, yeah, it was it was fun and. You know, having Best by my side too has helped me a lot, and wouldn't want anybody else. So it's um, it's been a great year, and I'm just looking forward to keep going. Um, yeah, it's it's been a, it's been a good uh, good run for us, and um, I think Joel's deserved um, what he's got, and uh, he did a great job. And you know, I'm just here to to help out, and um, you know, be that quiet leader, and. Thought I've done a pretty good job of that, just doing the right things every day, and you know, try to teach those younger kids to, um, you know, you got to show up and do your work, and um, the game will reward you, like Coach says. So, um, yeah, it's been a great ride, and um, Coach Gabs has done a great job, uh, you know, keeping us in um, in the know, and communication's been great. So um, that's helped us a lot too. I assume this means a lot to you guys, but I'd like you to at least. Try to give us some kind of idea of how you feel about it, but just the way the last couple of years have, have kind of ended, and you know, things got to where they weren't looking so good at the end of the year. To for this in your senior year to be at this point in the season where there's a couple things left, and you're still right there, and you're still fighting, and to fight the injuries that you guys have had this year, and the fact that you know you're essentially the same team <coughs> as a year ago, minus you know four really good players and you know three freshmen who weren't very experienced. Uh, uh, what's it mean to you to be still kicking at this point of the season and uh, you know, fighting for something here at the end. Yeah, honestly, I think this is almost kind of the way we probably maybe envisioned the season. You know, I thought um, we kind of knew we were going to get better as the season goes on just with how much um, turnover there's going to be. 
Um, but this is awesome. I mean, yeah, to be in it still and, and to be right there, I think this is all we can ask for, especially as seniors. Um, you know, we just want to make it back. Um, we've got a lot of drive and and it's great. It's, you know, it's to be in this position at, in our senior years is awesome. Like you said, the past couple of years have been really tough and I can't imagine what those seniors kind of went through and, and how it ended. It's not, uh, it's not a way you want to end a season, I guess, and, and especially your career. So, so for us to be in this position right now, it's, um, it just means a lot and, and hopefully we can do what we can and kind of keep this going as long as we can. Oh, he hit it right on the head. From your standpoint, um, have you had to mention anything to the forward group this week, just considering the couple of injuries you guys had this last week and things may shuffle, obviously, just because of those things? Well, what was the question? Uh, just for you, what's your forward group? Have you guys had to talk amongst yourselves about what you guys need to do to offset the fact that you might be down a couple of guys this week? No, we haven't really talked about it yet. Um, you know, we don't we don't know what's going on with Dave yet. Uh, we're still hoping, op optimistic that he's gonna you know be ready. But um, you know, we're gonna be ready either way. Um, you know, Freddie's out for at least a couple weeks, so um, you know someone's gonna have to fill that spot. And um, I think we got the guys who can do it. So uh, you know, you just get, you got to be ready for your opportunity. And um, I think I think they will be ready. Someone will step up. Yeah, how do you how do you feel you guys have overcome things like that this year? Because yeah, I think that kind of just shows the character of our group here. And uh, we've battled some adversity um, all along this year, kind of. So like Tyler said, we've got the guys that can do it here. So um, uh, and even the guys, that, the guys that have been in the lineup too, they can they can step up and, and give us more. And the guys that haven't been playing much, um, you know, this is great for them too. They've been working hard and, um, you know, sometimes an opportunity like, like this comes – and some guys just take it and run. So um, we're looking for that. And, um, you know, it's going to be a huge weekend, especially if we, we don't have those two guys. But, um, you know, we, we believe. And, um, you know, at the end of the day, we're not too worried about um, who we got in the lineup. You guys are pretty good about staying in the know and kind of understanding the big picture and everything like that. Um, how do you stress to everybody else that, OK, this is the CC team that everybody plays at the end of the year normally, that they're fighting for something, too, and the last couple of weeks at Lincoln's kind of Put them in the spot now where you know they can really do something here uh, down the stretch. You know, I'm sure you're expecting a lot more out of them this weekend, but you know, maybe someone to see from them at the end of the last couple of years. Yeah, I think I think we already know what kind of team they are and you know, we, we all saw them beat Denver last week and that's something we couldn't do. So, you know, we're gonna be ready for them and you know, we, we know their forwards are fast and um, all over the puck. So just trying to, you know, work on moving the puck quick this week and uh, just being crisp with our passes. So um, that's it's a little bit different story from the past few years, and you know they're fighting for something too. So um, it'll be a battle. Yeah, I think they have like the leading score in the league. I'm pretty sure. Um, so that's um, you know at the end of the day, it's, I think it's good for a conference too to see them kind of bounce back and and have a good year. I think it's great. Um, but um, for us, it's going to be a tough test. And um, you know, like we've talked about a lot, is it's, it's going to be a huge weekend. But um, I think we all know what kind of team they are, and, and we're not going to take them lightly, that's for sure. Kind of going back to Joel and, and, and Tyler, uh, you guys talked about trying to influence the younger guys, too. When you guys first got here, do you remember some of the players that maybe you were a bit in awe of or guys that you know either took you aside, kind of influenced you, maybe even gave you some of the tough love a little bit? Yeah, for sure. That's funny you say that, actually. Um, when I was named captain, I, I called Zombo and O'Rourke and just talked to them. Those, those guys were, were the guys that, um, like like you said, I was just in awe on how much they work and um, the best two captains i ever had in my life. So um, those are guys you want to keep in touch with a little bit and, and talk to and see how they do things and, and stuff like that. But um, <laughs> we still talk about it. Yeah. Like we still talk about how, how good Zombo and O'Rourke was and, and even Masa, I mean, that guy cared so much about the game and, and stuff like that. So I think that's thing, those are some things that we all kind of learned from that. And um, just, and the best thing about it, they're just great guys, you know. So, um, yeah, it's uh, something that I learned a lot from those guys for sure. Yeah. I think they, they did a great job of, you know, bringing the team together, um, you know, in the worst of times. If, if we got swept or whatever it may be, they, they always knew how to handle a situation. And, um, it's just, it's something you can't teach. You just gotta, you know, learn through experience. So, 
um, yeah, those were great two leaders for us, and um, I think we learned a lot from them. You guys were a big part, obviously, the, the, <coughs> and that was early in your career, and as you guys sort of get closer and start thinking about, you know, trying to do enough at least to get in the NCAA tournament and stuff, is, is there things that you take away from that experience? Because, I mean, even in the second half, there were some ups and, and some downs going into NCHC tournament play. Is there any similarities or any, any kind of experience you take from that to try to, you know, impart on, on the team right now? Um, yeah, there's one thing that we kind of talked about was um, the distractions kind of, you know, there's more of them. Um, I remember especially when we went to the Frozen Four, like we had like police escort everywhere and it was just like everyone was just like, Wah! and it's just like at the end of the day, like, we, you know, we're here to win hockey games. And um, so it's tough. So that's something we've talked about um, amongst the team and, and just to really stay focused here. And, and I think that's something that we've talked about a lot this year is just not to look too much forward. And, you know, we don't we don't talk about winning a national championship too much. Um, talking about it isn't going to improve your chances. So um, it's something that we're just going to work towards, and, and it starts this weekend. So. And I probably don't know this until it happens on Friday or Saturday, but is it you guys kind of anticipate that it's going to be a little tougher to kind of lose yourself in the moment, this being, as Tony mentioned, a guaranteed final weekend? Or trying to stress the even keel play or do you feel like hey you know what i'm gonna let loose uh, this weekend because this might be my final time in this arena yeah for sure i mean <laughs> to be honest i don't even know how to answer that question it's um i've never been there before so i don't know how to answer that but um i'm sure when that time comes uh something something's gonna happen so uh, <laughs> i guess we'll see